So what's really the difference between all the different types of boost pedals? And which one is better? Is a boost pedal better? Top end boost, EQ pedal, a preamp? Let's discuss that a bit more. A boost pedal is used rather generically. Often we talk about boosting something and we mean it in completely different ways, sometimes. For example, some people talk about boosting an amp and they mean giving it more gain. And they also might mean, in the same conversation, giving it more volume. But you put those in two different places. See the link in the description for a video where I demonstrated that. But there are other, there are multiple types of boosts. And I want to kind of dive into that and show you the different types of boosts. At least not all of them, but a bunch of different types. Demonstrate them. Maybe talk a little bit about the uh, circuitry aspects of them. And um, maybe kill a few myths as well, like the preamp pedal. I hate that term. Like I understand it, but it's, it's a, generally a marketing term in the guitar world now. EQ pedals, for example, they do EQ some things. Duh. That's generally what their purpose is. Boosting specific frequencies. But for the most part, you could boost frequencies or on something like a Boss GE7 or many other EQ pedals, you can just boost the volume, which is basically a full frequency booster. Other boosters like a Range Master, called a top end boost, um, they do a different thing. They're going to boost the front end a bit, drop the bottom end, and that's gonna give you a crunchier type of tone, which is essentially kind of what like the Tube Screamer stuff and uh, the Klon and uh, the Klon type of circuit, that's kind of what it's doing, except it's more in the mids and highs section. So it's really still cutting that bass, making it crunchier, and um, that's really what's, what's doing it. You're just goosing that gain stage of the amp and making it crunchier. So we talk about boost being more organic, maybe a little bit warmer, some more transparent. These are all buzzwords that really don't translate into anything except uh, EQ, generally. Some boosts will be a little bit dirtier, some will be very clean, and uh, others work great with certain types of guitars and pickups. Others don't work so good. So let's talk about that. Let's, uh, let's go through some several different types of circuits and uh, nerd it right up. Okay, for this first circuit, we're gonna do a non-inverting op-amp style. Now, I know that's probably a word that means nothing to you. Uh, think of this, this is basically like a MXR micro-amp. So, it's pretty basic circuit, still sounds good, works good, full frequency. Here's the sound without any sort of boost. Now the amp is clean. Uh, Fender Deluxe Reverb, by the way. And then, as I turn it on. This knob right here is actually turning up the boost. So if we turn it up all the way, it is gonna clip the op amp just a little bit. So, since it is clipping that much, I'm gonna back it down just a bit so we still get a lot of volume bump, but we're just not clipping the op amp now. All right, let's discuss a little bit about the circuit. Okay, this is the micro amp schematic. So real quick, let me try to explain quick tutorial on how to read this because you may not be familiar with it. So super, super easy, guitar in, this is the input jack. So think of this as a path. The audio, the sound of the guitar travels this way. Goes through a cap, goes through a resistor. This thing here is an op amp. Don't really need to know much about that other than it's going to boost volume. So all this stuff here helps to boost the volume. Here's the potentiometer that turns it up by creating more gain, not clipping, but gain. Then the sound goes out and then into the output jack. So uh, it's that simple. Now, of course, this does not show the switching, but that's the basic sig signal path right there. All right, another version of the schematic, same thing. I just drew this in Circuit Lab real quick so I can simulate it. So when I simulate it, 
going to simulate the pot being turned up. Now this right here, all these bunched up, that's just because the taper, it's a linear taper on here and uh, the actual taper on the potentiometer is reversed. So don't pay attention to that. It is fairly smooth with the, with the taper of the pot, but you can see uh, that's with it all the way boosted. So it's fairly full frequency. Okay, now this circuit is kind of the same, still op amp based, but this is utilizing inverting op amp stages. Now, let's not go too too off in the weeds here. Basically, it's uh, the boost is sort of like the vertex boost. Uh, that's kind of the sort of the circuit type that we're going for here. It's still fairly neutral. Uh, whenever you turn up the gain control on this, again, gain, not clipping, not distortion, but gain. Um, in other words, volume. Whenever you turn it up, it's actually bumping just a little bit of mids and uh, it's a cool circuit, sounds good. So down low, uh, sounds like this. Uh, let me do that again. As you can hear, it is distorting a little bit. It does clip just a little bit. These pickups are a little hot in this guitar. Not too bad, but they are a little bit hotter than, of course, it, being a humbucker, they're gonna be hotter than like a single coil. For op amp type circuits, I think it's really good um, for, for guitars with hotter pickups. They don't, it doesn't compress or distort too much. And uh, sometimes on like well, some other circuits, which I'll show you, if it's too hot, like a, like a mu amp circuit, I'll show you in a minute. If the pickups are too hot, you actually have to lower them down or kill some voltage, kill some signal going into it. So anyways, the inverting op amp boost, here we go, all the way up. So we'll roll that back off a little bit so we can still get some clean volume. Just a slight little mid hump. Now, not like a tube screw mid hump. This is the wider, wider cube mid hump. All right, let's discuss the circuit. This here is the signal coming in. So this just is a simulation of a guitar pickup coming in and Signal goes through here. This is the op amp again. All this stuff creates the gain. This here is the control, the gain control or volume control. So I have it labeled on here. Same thing for all intents and purposes, for our purposes. Then from there, it goes into another inverting op amp, flipping the phase back to normal. And then the sound goes out. And, um, and that's it. That's pretty much it. When we simulate the pot, like I said, it's not a gigantic mid bump at all. Just a very slight one. Just ever so slight. Dropping a little bass at the, at 40 Hertz, which you're not going to hear in a guitar speaker anyways. So it's pretty flat for the most part. It's pretty flat. Um, and again, keep in mind, these graphs are strictly mathematical. So in real world practices, sometimes things are a little bit different to my ear. It sounds a little bit warmer than a non, than the non inverting op amp from the, from the micro micro amp, uh, type circuit, but I still think it sounds good. All right, let's check out another one. A MOSFET boost. Let's look at this. This little control here is going to increase the gain on it. You can hear that crackle okay, as I think ZVEX used to call it on like the Box of Rock or whatever it was. Or the SHO, that's what it was. So that's just kind of changing the, the bias there, but it's going to give us more volume. Put it all the way down. Well, first of all, let's listen to it with it off. And now I'm going to turn it up. Um, and just so you know, I have like a volume pedal, a passive volume pedal off to the side. So from here, from, from this breadboard, 
I'm going into just a regular op amp buffer and that's then going into a volume pedal all the way up right now but the MOSFET is a little bit louder and um, I want to make sure that we don't get the sound of the amp clipping I want to get the sound of the actual circuit clipping so as I turn it uh, when I turn it all the way up I'm going to back off the volume just a bit So you may be wondering, is that just the op-amp buffer clipping? Well, it's not. We're running it at 18 volts, um, so there is a lot more headroom. Turn it off. Versus on. So it's not the op amp buffer clipping um, coming after the circuit, that's just the MOSFET clipping. Let's look at the circuit a little bit more in depth. All right, here's the MOSFET circuit. It's pretty simple. Uh, sound comes in through here, hits this MOSFET, and then all this stuff kind of does the power amplification. The sound goes out into there. So pretty simple, can't get much more simple than that. Let's simulate it. We're going to sweep the pot as well, so all these lines are is the volume basically being raised. So it's pretty neutral, still yet, dropping a smidge of bass, but not much. The JFET boost, uh, made popular by a ton of different ones. We have uh, somewhere over there, I think. I made a pedal called the Talent Booster, which is a JFET boost. Uh, the EP3, I think, booster. Just a JFET boost. Um, a lot of people like to call them preamps, but not really in the sense that you might think. So generally, to kind of explain the preamp versus boost thing, in the guitar pedal world, it's just kind of like the Wild West. Some people will call a circuit a preamp because they market it that way, when it's not really like a preamp in the studio sense. Generally, a preamp what we've used, for, used them for in the past is like if you have a microphone that needs more gain and can't really pick up sound like a microphone should do, you use a special kind of preamp. Uh, in this situation with guitars, uh, now that preamps are popular, you see a lot of people coming out. Not, not picking on exotic necessarily, but I see this everywhere. Uh, a lot of people will, will just call a specific circuit a preamp, and it's not, it's just you know, a boost circuit generally. Or it might have a little bit of flavoring. It might have a little bit of overdrive. It might have none. It might have distortion. It might have cabinet emulation. Like it's, there is no standard. So who the hell really knows what that even means in the guitar world? It does it, there's no standard for it right now. So it's extremely confusing. There's not, I really don't have any advice in this situation other than just simply ask the company what it is. What makes it a preamp? Is it just because it's boosting the volume? Well, what makes that different than a booster then? So, I don't know. That's that's basically uh, the confusion with the preamp versus booster thing. So let's talk about the JFET. I love this particular type of circuit with, um, for what I do, which is like, I this guitar is has humbuckers in it, but they're not super hot. Um, and they're just a little warmer, I like them. And I, I do a lot of Telecaster stuff. So I it, for that, for single coils, for, Humbuckers that aren't really that hot, I think a JFET circuit works great. It's a little, it's, a, it's not technically warmer, but sounds warmer to my ears and feels a little bit more slightly compressed, but not like a compressor pedal. Just a little more smooth. Problem is I'll never use too hot of pickups with it. So first of all, my clean tone. I'll turn it on, and this is volume basically all the way up, but I've again I'm riding the volume with my foot on a volume pedal that way it doesn't clip the amp so here we go here's the sound of the JFET
So for example, I was talking about it kind of not really working so well with hot art pickups. Let me demonstrate that for you. Okay, this is my PRS SE and um, yeah. All right, here we go. This is just a clean tone. <laughs> I turn the booster on, I'll back the volume down so again, so I'm not clipping the amp. You, you can kind of hear how it gets splatty. So if you roll the volume off just a bit, cleans it up. Yeah, that's that's one of the things I don't like about uh, JFET circuits is just with hot out with hot pickups or with the pickup set really close to the strings, which I don't really recommend, can kind of make things splatty. And then what's called the mu amp. It's basically like a push-pull JFET circuit, which might be a little confusing. So let's just say it's a JFET, JFET circuit that kind of self-biases in a way. And um, it sounds really good with lower output pickups. I think, I think the I think Full Tone had a boost at one time that was made this type of circuit. Um, but the single coil sound really good with it. And humbuckers tend to clip it a little bit too much. Again, unless you kill some of that input voltage and uh, input signal for those who don't know what I mean. And uh, let's try it. Here's, um, here's my Whitfill single coil telly. Again, clean tone. Let's turn it on, back the volume off so we don't clip the amp. Try a couple different guitars. Now with my Friedman, humbuckers in this one again, of course. So already it's clipping this, so what I would need to do is either back off my volume or if I'm designing the circuit, I'm going to kill some of that signal before it goes into this stage. Let's try something even heavier, uh, the PRS. All right, PRS on the single coil, and um, yeah, this is going to compress and kind of be sputtery again. <laughs> Let's take a look at the circuit. As set up, this is probably going to clip quite a bit, but this is the full frequency circuit. Input comes in here, goes to the cap, goes to the resistor, hits the first FET. This FET, these two are actually set up in a push-pull circuit. This FET up here is going to provide enough power, um, voltage, and all that stuff to create gain in this stage. And then um, the sound goes out through this capacitor, out through this resistor, and this is set up as a volume, and it goes out. So if we simulate that, let's look at this a bit. So it, we're cutting a bit of bass. We are cutting a bit of bass. Uh, you know, it, in guitar speakers, you're probably going to hear 80 hertz and up. So it's a t it is a bit of bass, but it's not gi not gigantic. It's not like a top end boost, which we'll look at here in a second. All right, and finally the top end boost. So this is, um, I think it's probably made popular the most by the range master type circuit. It's the transistor type circuit that's cutting off some bottom end, thereby kind of allowing the top end to continue through. And it's really cool whenever you have a, an amp that's, that's a little dark or if it's a little flubby, it kind of helps bring that, um, well, take, doesn't really take the flubbiness out of it, but what it adds to the sound will tighten things up. Here's the clean signal.
but that's not really using it in uh, in the way it's meant to because I'm using a deluxe reverb on the normal channel, vibrato channel rather, which is pretty bright. And the amp is turned way down low so it's not clipping. And therefore, kind of sounds crappy. So let me put it through the darker channel, the normal channel, and I'll crank up the amp and then um, see what it sounds like once you're driving an already dirty, darker amp. All right, on the normal channel, I'm cranked up quite a bit. Bass in trouble at five, so halfway up. By the way, that noise, that's just because the breadboard and stuff kind of makes little antennas. All right, let's take a look at the schematic real quick. All right, taking a look at the schematic here. Here's the input. Guitar signal comes in, goes through a small cap, goes to the transistor, and this small cap kind of cuts the bass off. Actually, it does cut the bass off with this resistor there. It gets amplified, goes to this capacitor, and then goes out. So again, a simple circuit. Let's take a look at what the frequency looks like. Boom, there you go. Lots of bass cut off, and then uh, starting around 2K or so, just stays constant. So a question I hear is, well, isn't an EQ pedal kind of the same thing if you move the sliders around to simulate that? No. On an EQ pedal, it's just a certain set of frequencies. So if you move multiple frequencies up, it's just going to be peaks. When you move several of them down, it's sort of the same thing. Rather than really talk about it too much, let me play through it, and then we can take a look at, the, at a schematic and kind of simulate a little bit. Here's my EQ pedal. In this situation, I'm trying to mimic that frequency response of that top boost. My clean tone, which is my bass tone, I should say, which is really my dirty tone. So not only does it not really do the same sort of, um, you know, the same sort of frequencies, it just feels different too. It doesn't feel anything like that transistor that's, that's getting a little bit spongy when you dig into it. It's kind of reacting with you. It's just different, not the same thing. Let's take a look at an EQ schematic and uh, we'll kind of simulate that a little bit. All right, and here is an EQ schematic and um, I have, I have put in fixed resistors, so it's mimicking what I'm doing on that EQ pedal. And this is just will kind of give you an overview. So when we simulate what I did over there on, on uh, the playing part, here's what it looks like. It's not really the same thing. It's just not. Okay, to really understand what I'm saying, um, I wanted to kind of give you a visual of what's happening on a graphic EQ. So when you boost it, that's kind of what it looks like. It's narrow at the top. This is the width could be called the Q. Towards the bottom, it's wider. So when you turn it up just a little bit, it's a wide Q. The more you turn that slider up, the more narrow it gets. And that's why it gets a little peaky. And the same thing whenever you um, go down on, on the slider, whenever you move it downwards rather than upwards. So if we're moving it down, we're moving that one down a little bit, and we're moving that one down a little bit, try to visualize that's kind of what's happening on the frequency response. Now it's not that perfect because it is analog, but this kind of gives you an idea. It's not taking them all and moving them all down like it would with a simple high pass filter. All right, let's talk about some other comparisons. Is an EQ pedal the same as a normal booster whenever the frequency sliders are set to even and just boost up the level? Is that the same? Let's check it out. Boss GE7 and our DB Plus. Both of them full frequency. So here we go. Clean tone again. Thank you. 
So somewhat the same. It's um, they're both op amp based circuits. The, I mean, it is a little bit different circuitry, but you're kind of pushing the same frequency. So not that drastic of a difference whenever it's a full frequency op amp boost versus just using an EQ pedal. Works well. Uh, what about using something like uh, a Tumnus or a Klon style or a Tube Screamer? Like how does how is that different than using a regular booster? Let's check that out. Okay, I have the Tumnus here. I have a Talent booster here. So this is our old boost. It's a JFET style boost, similar to the one that I breadboarded earlier. A little more elaborate than that, but still kind of based off that same sort of thing. So here we go with the Tumnus or a Klon style circuit, whenever you turn the gain all the way down, you're not really introducing any of the distortion characteristics, but you still have the tone control and the tone control does influence the mids. So that's why it's still gonna give a bit of a mid push. So here we go with the Tumnus first. <laughs> Compared to the talent booster. So a little more bottom end. Again, you don't hear that mid push like you do with the Tumnus or a Klon style circuit. And again, on the on the Tumnus or a Klon style circuit, you have that treble control. So you can. could boost that up so it's never never really neutral never really transparent either i know a lot of people think it is i mean you can apply whatever adjective you want to it but i would typically call it transparent something that's not really changing the frequency spectrum and that circuit the tumnus or the clon circuit does it by nature it's boosting about 1k or so but that's a cool sound you're running in, if you're running into a dirty channel it's quite a bit different let's try that real quick Okay, again, on the dirty side, so I have it in the normal channel. Uh, again, same setting I was on earlier, so it's breaking up quite a bit. Let's start with the uh, just the bass tone. Add a little tumness to it. Now again, that's just a clean sound. Not, we're not adding any sort of grit to it all. It's totally clean. JFET circuit. So still, at, since it is full frequency, it's kind of getting a little bit fuzzy. We can add in a little bit of clipping whenever you're using something like the Tumnus or a Tube Screamer or something like that. And it starts tightening things up even more. So that's the basic difference. There's there's plenty of overdrives that do get pretty clean, but you're still gonna get the flavoring of that. You're still gonna get the EQ spectrum of the other parts in the circuit that are doing things to the sound of, of, of the guitar. So yes, you can use a distortion, well, typically an overdrive pedal as a boost, but there's some give and take, right? So as with the Tumnus, for example, you're gonna have the tone control set, tone control section that's going to influence the sound. Um, on a straight boost, you're generally not gonna have that. And the fill is different too. So the Tumnus is increasing voltage quite a bit. So there's more headroom in there, um, where as the talent booster, it's not so, or typical JFET circuits, some JFET circuits like the Keeley Katana will boost the voltage as well, but it's still a, a, a JFET style fill of any sort of gain circuit just feels different and it's hard to really describe in words until you play one you're like oh that sounds great which is a reason why if you are playing at home you may want to use a boost pedal and just turn it down because the the feel the actual feel of the note is is different than just playing clean even though to someone else standing 10 feet away from you they may say that sounds exactly the same yeah but it just feels different underneath your finger Can you 
can use a compressor pedal as a boost. Yes, you can, but really depending on the type of compressor. Our Eagle compressor, for example, has a blend control, so you can turn the blend all the way down and it's just clean, no compression. And then you can add a little bit into it if you want to, but you don't have to. The downside is it's not really, most compressors aren't really made to boost just the clean volume that much, but you still can. It's still gonna boost somewhat. So let's go ahead and give that a try. I have the levels on both of these two pedals set pretty much to ear, pretty close. So let's try the compressor first. And I'm, I'm back on the clean channel, so I'm back on the vibrato channel. Let's give it a try. <laughs> Compared to the talent booster. So I don't know if you can hear on the actual audio, but there's a little bit of clipping happening with the JFET circuit. And the way this is designed, I can back that down a little bit and kill some of it. But I kind of like it. I kind of like it to be just a smidge dirty. So whenever you do really dig into it, you get a little bit of grind. And when I when I pick, I generally pick pretty hard. I really bang on the strings quite a bit. So. And same test on a dirty channel. We'll start with the ego. All right, that's the video. Hope this kind of helped you. Hope it gave you a little bit more knowledge that maybe you had some questions that you didn't quite understand all the ins and outs of, of you know, boosts and boost pedals and boost circuits. And it can get pretty confusing, I understand. Uh, so hopefully it clarified. If it didn't, please make sure to leave a comment and then in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment and I'll try to answer them as I see them. Thanks for watching.